Good evening and welcome everyone. I am State Representative Janet Yang Rohr. I am the State Rep for the 41st District uh, serving the Naperville and, Warren and Warrenville areas. Uh, I've been in office for the roughly the past two years since January 2021. Uh, in addition to looking at legislation, passing, um, passing legislation, one of the big things that a state rep does is to make sure that, that we are connecting resources with our community. And today I am so thrilled to be joined by um, representatives of, of one of the, the most uh, interesting and, and helpful resources that I think a lot of us have. Um, I am joined today by the Citizens Utility Board, um, otherwise known as CUB. And uh, I wanted to give, give people watching uh, some, some background as to why, why we're here today and how this program came about. Um, it came about for, from a few different ways. Uh, one is from very engaged citizens, very engaged community members from, from the Naperville and from the 41st District area. Um, they wanted to make sure that, that we as a community, as the 41st District, really understood what CUB is and how to use it as a resource. Um, and also we, also, we, we had uh, community members who were coming to us and, and asking, a, asking us about their natural gas bills. They were asking, you know, why all of a sudden are their bills so high? And, you know, are, are there ways, are there things that we could do about it? So this is a two-part series tonight. Uh, tonight, we are going to talk a little bit with, with Cub about a general overview, what they do, how they can help us. And then um, we'll go into a little bit more detail later, but we, we will also have a second part that will take place in a few weeks where you'll be able to do a one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, session with, with Cub. And, um, you know, so, so generally when the Illinois General Assembly created CUB in 1983, uh, it gave CUB a, a, a very um, set mission. So it is a, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. Um, its mission is clear, and, and that is to represent the, the interests of residential utility customers um, across Illinois. So CUBS teams of consumer advocates, uh, environmentalists, legal experts, and, um, they, and researchers, they really work every day for Illinois consumers, so, so people like you and me. And so today we are joined by two members of the team. Uh, we have Kate Schonk. She is the Sustainable uh, Communities Liaison and Outreach Coordinator. And we also have Scott Allen. Um, Scott is the Environmental Outreach Coordinator. And uh, so Kate and Scott, would you mind just sharing a little bit about your background and how you came to CUB and, and um, what your position at CUB entails? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Kate. Um, I'm the Sustainable Communities Liaison and I originally started at CUB in February as the outreach coordinator. So I was um, managing all of our outreach events. Um, and now I do a little bit more with our low income energy efficiency programs. Um, and before that, I did a lot with environmental organizing. I graduated from the University of Michigan in 2020. Um, and yeah, I've really enjoyed my time at CUB and I'm happy to be here tonight. Awesome, and Scott, how about you? Yeah, and thank you, Representative Yang Rohr. Um, appreciate you having us. Um, Scott Allen, and I've worked for CUB since February of 2014, uh, worked primarily downstate in Ameren territory um, on several issues. The last few years have been uh, trying to pass the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, which is just turned a year old. Um, my background is, uh, <laughs> is political science. When I was a graduate student, though, I interned for two years with the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, working on sustainability research. Um, so that's kind of how I fell into this field. All right, we are we are so excited to to get started. Um, you know, before we really begin, I just want uh, again everyone to to know that this this first part tonight will be more about a, a general overview. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what Cub is. Uh, but then on October 26th, so a few weeks from now, uh, we're going to have Cub come back and they're going to be in Naperville actually, and they're going to host a, a bill clinic with us. Um, so this second part uh, will be in person and uh, people, uh, people in the district will have the opportunity to, to sign up and have one-on-one -on -one meetings with Cub. 
um, where uh, they'll be able to work with with your experts, right? Um, and to to look specifically at your utility bills, um, where you all will be able to you know provide uh, very individualized uh, suggestions to how, how to how to keep your bills down, really. Um, so with that, I'm going to just hand it over to Kate, um, who will begin our program and share with us some of the ways that that CUB uh, serves our, our citizens. Yeah, I think um, our presentation is being shared right now. Um, so yeah, I was introduced already. Um, I'm Kate, and this is going to be a little presentation on navigating some of your utility bills. Um, we're going to go over Nightcor as well as um, some information on your internet bill and uh, telecom as well. So just to go over a little bit more about um, CUB, we represent utility rate payers. Um, we represent um, consumers in front of the ICC as well as the Illinois General Assembly um, and in the courts. We also help individuals with their bills. We have a hotline. Um, and you can always feel free to call that hotline if you have any questions about your bills. Um, I have it listed at the top uh, right corner on all these slides. Um, we also have a website and we have a lot of different uh, publications as well as blogs. Um, we have lots of social media as well if you're interested in that. And we have an email, it's ubc at citizensutilityboard.org and you can send in your bills and someone will contact you and just go over those um with you whenever you want um, and we also do a lot of consumer education we have outreach events like this one around uh, 500 a year um, like i said we do a lot of media and publications and we also have spanish-speaking staff available um, if anyone would prefer to speak spanish um, and in general we advocate for affordable sustainable energy policies in illinois And this is just an image we like to share. This is what people typically think of um, when they think of CUB. We just like to keep utility companies in check um, and advocate for consumers. So just to start, I'm gonna go over a little bit um, about Nightcore. Um, I know bills can be kind of confusing, so we like to decode them a little bit um, and tell you the areas that you should be looking at. Um, and then I'm gonna go into our internet information as well as telecom. Um, and I'm also gonna go over some financial assistance programs um, that you can access. So this is a NICOR bill. Um, and I wanna point out a few different things that we typically look at. And this is something that we do with people during our individual consultations um, at our utility bill clinics. Um, so if you come to that, then you can have a more in-depth um, explanation of your bill uh, individually, but this is just one that we have as an example. Uh, one of the first things that we like to look at is under the section that says a message for you. This is where it would tell you on your NICOR bill if you are actually with an alternative supplier. Um, and at CUB, uh, you know, if you're familiar with CUB at all, you would know that um, we typically don't recommend alternative suppliers. Um, a lot of the time they will charge you higher rates than the actual utility company. Um, and they basically just try to scam people and um, profit off of you. So we always recommend that if you're approached by an alternative supplier to not give them any of your information um, and typically just to stick with the utility company in your area. Um, so that's the first thing we look at. Another Can I ask? Kate, a little bit about alternative suppliers. So what what kind of company names are, are should, should we have in mind? Yeah, so there are a lot of different alternative suppliers. Um, we actually have a list, I believe, on our website. Um, a lot of them have weird names, like they'll have the word energy in them. Um, I can't think of a specific one right now, but we have a list of them on our website. Um, if you're curious at all, or if you get approached and want to see um, if it is an alternative supplier. Do you know, so the alternative supplier will be on your NICOR gas bill? So if you are signed up with one, it'll say that under the a message for you section. Um, 
and it'll it'll say that it's um, you're with an alternative supplier. It should also give you the phone number for one. So if you want to get off of the alternative supplier, then you can call them. And do you know the percentage of of people who use an alternative supplier? I don't. Um, it's hard to say. It, it can be fairly common. Usually, when we have our utility bill clinics, we come across maybe one person who's on one. Um, so not, not super common. The average person probably isn't on one, um, but we always like to remind people to look out for it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, other than that, the next thing that we like to look at is how much you're actually paying for gas. So if you can see under the natural gas costs, it says, um, so this is a bill from January. Yeah, January. Um, so it has the December cost, um, 177.38 therms at 68 um, cents. Right now, the current gas price for Nightcore is $1.24 cents per therm. Um, but it's always good to just know how much you're paying. Um, if your bill goes up significantly and you're not using um, more energy and you're trying to explain why that might be, it's probably because the gas price went up. Um, and then the last thing that we really like to point out is how much energy you're actually using. So this graph um, under the monthly therm use shows the your usage per month. And this is just good to compare. Um, as you can see, it has January from the previous year. So you can see if you're using more energy that year. Um, this bill also has a trend that we would typically like to see with gas bills um, because people are heating their homes with gas in the winter, so the usage goes up, and then they're um, cooling their home uh, in the summer, so they're using more electricity typically. Um, so yeah, those are the major things that we like to point out, um, but there are a lot of different charges, as you can see under the delivery charge. Um, that is where the, the gas companies can typically profit. They are not allowed to actually profit off of the supply itself. Um, so there are a lot of different charges there, um, and we have more information about those specifically on our website. Another thing we just like to point out is um, a program called Nightcore Home Solutions. Um, so Nightcore Home Solutions is not affiliated with Nightcore Gas, um, but you could be paying for it on your Nightcore bill. Um, so that bill that I just showed did not have this um, line item on it, but it would be under the total additional products and services line item. Um, Nightcore Home Solutions is basically a, a maintenance plan, um, and they recommend consumers pay for multiple plans to cover repairs either to gas lines, um, furnaces, or their boiler. Um, but the money that you save by not being on Nightcore Home Solutions or any other maintenance plan would actually cover um, the rare time that you would need to repair um, the line or the, your boiler or anything like that. Um, so if you take a look at your Nightcore bill and you see that you are on Nightcore Home Solutions, you can call them at that number um, and get off of that. Yeah, so another thing that we always like to talk about, um, we get questions about this at every event we go to, um, why are natural gas prices so high? And this is due to a multitude of factors. Um, one of them being that there was a cold snap, I think, um, last February. So some wellheads in Texas and in the South broke, um, which limited the supply of gas around the country. Um, there also is the, the war in Ukraine, which is affecting the gas prices, as well as uh, less gas exploration. Um, and also COVID has affected uh, gas supply and demand. Uh, so really it's just a matter of less supply, more demand of gas. And how long has, um, uh, at this point, how long have we, have we seen prices like, that have been more elevated than, than historically? We, uh, be, like Kate mentioned, beginning in February of 2021, the, the Christ, the Texas energy crisis, that's when we saw prices elevate. 
and they have been sustained and they've elevated even more. The $1.24 per therm that Kate mentioned is extraordinarily high. And if you saw that bill, sample bill that she was using, the price per therm there was about 68 cents. So almost double what we were seeing a couple of years ago. Yeah, so um, sort of to combat those high energy prices, um, we always like to talk about energy efficiency. Um, and there are a lot of different ways you can be more energy efficient. Um, basic energy efficiency rules are just to turn off your lights um, when you're not in the room or to unplug things that you're not using, make sure that your home is well weatherized, um, things like that, things that you know your parents and their parents have been telling you for years, um, those things actually do work. But something that we like to recommend as well is um, a home energy assessment provided through NICOR. Um, it's also provided through other utility companies, but for um, people on this presentation, NICOR is probably the most relevant. Um, and you can call that number on the screen to schedule an assessment. Basically what they do is someone will do a walkthrough of your home and determine ways that you can be more energy efficient. And through that, you can get some free products as well, um, like a free programmable, programmable thermostat, um, a um, more efficient shower head. And the shower head is good because it can help you use less water and it can also help um, maybe lower your gas bill from heating the water. Um, you can also get hot water pipe insulation as well um, as LED light bulbs. They'll come in and replace um, any LED light bulb that is, uh, or any light bulb that is not already LED. And you can also get some discounted products as well, as well as smart thermostats. Um, and they also offer the program virtually. So you can have someone um, virtually do an assessment. And if you do that, uh, the program virtually, the power strip that's listed under discounted price is actually free um, if you do the, the program through a virtual route. Um, but you can also just have someone come to your home. And is it pretty easy to get someone to your home or is there a long wait list for, for this program? Yeah, I don't believe that there's a wait list right now. Um, it's uh, It's been going on for a few years now, so I, I think that they kind of have it figured out. And um, yeah, I, I've talked to some consumers that have done the program and they, they were happy with it. Yeah. And so so maybe you can give us a few tips right now with the, the pro programmable um, thermostat, for example. Um, you know, we're, we're all kind of uh, comfortable at slightly different temperatures, but um, what what do you recommend? Uh, what what is um, Cub's recommendation for for what temperature to to set it at when um, we're you know not home or at night? Yeah, so um, in the winter we usually recommend you setting it at sixty eight degrees um, if you're home, and then if you're not home or if you're you know sleeping or something, you can set it about maybe seven to 10 degrees lower, but that's kind of a lot. Um, we usually recommend people don't go below 55 degrees because that has the potential to, you know, freeze your pipes. All right, and do do tools like um, like shrink wrapping windows, is that, does that actually help? Yeah, that can definitely help. Um, weatherizing any, anywhere that you feel a draft is helpful, getting those weather strips under your doors. Um, yeah, anything like that, covering, even covering the windows with blinds um, can help keep all your air in. And are these the kind of, um, are these the kind of tips that people could expect if, if they sign up for the, the in-person consultation? Yeah, absolutely. They will give you some tips on weatherizing your home. Um, I think they can also sort of look at your windows and tell if those should be updated. Um, and you can also find a lot of those energy efficiency tips on our website as well. We just published a blog recently on um, tips for preparing your home for the winter. Yeah, so now I'm going to get into some financial assistance programs. The first big one we like to highlight is LIHEAP. So this is the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. This is administered by DCEO. 
Um, and light heap is designed to help income eligible households pay for their heat in the winter. Um, it's for households who are at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. Um, and you can find those uh, income amounts on the Help Illinois Families website. So you can see if you would be eligible for LIHEAP or not. Um, and if you are, you can call their assistance line to get more information. You can also contact your local community action agency. Um, and you can find that on the DCEO website. Um, and another good thing is just to make sure that you tell your friends and family about this uh, program if they need assistance. Uh, it's always good to just spread the word. Yeah, and we we absolutely want to play a part in that. Um, and when if anyone's listening, I think one of our big jobs as a, as a state rep office is to make sure to connect constituents with all of these resources. Um, there, there are really so many out there, sometimes it gets overwhelming. So we are also here to, to help um, make sure that, that people get the, the resources they need. Absolutely. Another uh, program for paying for your winter heating is the MICOR gas sharing program. Uh, qualified residential customers can receive a one-time um, sharing grant of either $350 or $400. There is no requirement to pay it back, and this program is administered through the Salvation Army. To find more information about this, you can go to NICOR's website. Um, you can also go to our website, and it has more information on this program as well. And then another program we like to highlight is the Affordable Connectivity Program. This is offered through the FCC. And I believe this is also, um, you have to be at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. Um, and this will give you $30 per month to pay for your internet costs. So if you think you might be eligible or if you wanna see the eligibility requirements, you can go to that FCC website um, to get more information on that program. And speaking of internet, this is, um, just sort of some information about how to reduce your Wi-Fi bill. Um, a big thing that we like to talk about for every bill is to just look at it and see if there are any line items that you don't understand or you don't know why you're being charged that, especially for your cable and your internet bills. Um, a lot of the time there are charges that you can't really change, but it's always good to just know um, what they are and to call up your, um, your internet company and ask about the charges. Um, another good thing is to find out what the competition is charging. Uh, if you do want to switch uh, companies, you want to know, um, you know, maybe at and is charging less, maybe Comcast is, maybe you can find a better deal. Um, and it's always good to just know. And we always talk about finding hidden deals as well. Um, and this basically is just referring to, you know, if you're on your Wi-Fi on your phone, and you search uh, you know, Wi-Fi deals with Xfinity, it already knows that you are a Comcast customer with your Wi-Fi, um, and it's gonna show you deals relevant to your, your Wi-Fi package already. Um, so we just recommend that people either look on a private browser on their phone or even getting off their Wi-Fi or um, maybe going to a library and using a computer there to look at what deals are out there to see what they're offering. Um, and if you do end up calling your company uh, to try to get a better deal, we recommend that people ask for the cancellation or the retention department, um, because a lot of the time those, uh, those service representatives are authorized to give people better deals than just someone who answers the phone um, for any call. So they're, they're just trying to keep your business. Um, and so it's always good to just sort of threaten cancellation and see where you can get with that. Um, but we always recommend that people be nice and calm on these phone calls as frustrating as they can be. Um, and just try to show that you're informed and you really know what you're talking about. Um, and don't af be afraid to ask for a better deal, but know that a lot of deals may require you signing a contract. So you just have to be up on when your contract is ending. Um, I know this just happened to me recently where my contract ended with Xfinity um, and I didn't realize it and my bill went up about $20. 
Um, so I just had to call and make sure that I could get another similar contract. So just know when your contract is ending um, or it might go up. And then always look for discounts um, for having paperless bills or using auto pay. Um, a lot of the time companies will offer a five to $10 discount if you um, use auto pay or have paperless bills. Now, do you have visibility as to how um, reliable certain companies are? Are, are there, does it make a difference which, which cable or which internet um, company you're with? Yeah, so it really depends on the area that you're living in. Um, I, I think it, it can be, um, it can really vary, um, but usually you don't, you don't really know until you try the company um, and you can just sort of talk to your neighbors, see what other people have, um, see how their connection is. Um, but typically you, you might be able to check some sort of um, map of service areas. I'm not exactly sure, but um, yeah, I, I think the reliability is, is not necessarily dependent on, um, you know, the, the, the company. It's just, um, you know, it, it just depends on, um, on where their service is. Yeah. You know, I, I know you, um, you'll probably need to transition to, to Scott at some point, but can, can I just ask, like, one of the really striking things that I've seen in the slide so far is just how, um, like, frank you can be in things like saying uh, NICOR home services, just don't use it, <laughs> or um, with the the alternative service providers, don't don't use them, um, or, you know, to, like, these, offering these hacks uh, on how to get around um, uh, your 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 bill or make it lower. How uh, how are you able to be this independent, and how how like how, how, are, how how is Cub funded? Yeah, so Cub is a nonprofit, um, nonpartisan organization. So we're not affiliated with any of these utility companies. Um, we're we're completely independent. We're funded based off of grants um, that are also you know nonpartisan. So we really are independent, and we we serve um, the consumers. So we're looking out for consumers' best interests. Um, yeah, and we try to be honest as much as possible. We do a lot of research um, and try to find the best options for people. Um, Scott, yeah, I don't know if you have anything to add to that question, but. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, Representative Yang Roar. Um, over, over the last several years, 30 plus years, we notice and we keep track of um, how much people save or how much they lose on alternative gas or electric suppliers. And we noticed things um, way back when, when everybody had a landline telephone and you start seeing these charges for like, I don't remember what they're called, like linebacker, I think for AT&T, which was some sort of weird uh, telephone line insurance plan. Uh, so we ask those questions. We say, what is this? And uh, what does it actually do? Like what? what would a person do to, need to do to take advantage of this service? And so we just do some math and find out that you're paying X number of dollars over the course of a year. And we don't talk to many people who have ever taken advantage of that service. So given that we have a mandate from the General Assembly to protect consumers from those sorts of um, uh, sometimes predatory services, uh, I, I think our confidence comes from the fact that we've been we've been doing this for a really long time, and um, we are uh, an independent, you know, donor funded, donation funded, and grant funded. But uh, that's a service that we'll always maintain is being as as honest and upfront about these things with consumers as we can be. Yeah, you were um, you were unequivocal on on those recommendations. I thought that was really interesting, and that's a I think a important takeaway from from this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and just to continue ways that you can save on your your internet bills. Um, another thing we recommend is buying your own modem and router. 
Some companies won't allow you to, I don't think AT&T does, but Comcast does allow you to buy your own modem and router. Um, and if you rent it, it's around $15 per month. So the, the modem and router can pay for itself um, in less than a year usually. Um, and we always recommend to just look at your internet provider's approved modem and router list. And we have a whole fact sheet on buying your own modem and router that you can find on our website as well. Yeah, and next I'm just going to get into some phone options. Um, but I always like to talk about our guide to phone choices. You can find it um, on our website under our telecom um, page and it's either under the landline phone services as well as the cell phone services tabs. Um, and this guide goes into basically everything you need to know about buying a phone. And it can go in a lot more in depth than I can in this presentation. So I always recommend that people um, order their free copy of that. Yeah, so landlines, um, basically with phones, you have your home phone options and your cell phone options. Landlines, uh, a lot of big phone companies have uh, pushed to limit state regulations on local landline services. So prices have risen quite a bit. Um, the benefit of having a landline is it's more reliable and does not go out during a power outage. So that can be important if you live in a more rural area. Um, and it's not dependent on your internet like some other phone services. Um, another benefit is that 911 dispatchers can automatically trace an emergency call to your home with a traditional landline. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and if you do want to keep your landline service, um, it's always good to look at eliminating unnecessary services hiding on your bill. Um, things like inside wire protection or home wiring protection. Um, and also to be aware of bloated flat rate plans that can include unlimited calling options that you don't need. Um, so if you have a plan that includes a lot of international calling or long distance calling um, and you're not really using that, you can always try to get on a um, smaller plan that really accommodates your needs. Um, and then always shop around and negotiate as we say, but so that's basically the, the message on landlines. We do understand that a lot of people still want to keep them um, for their reliability, as well as being traced by 911. Um, so we're not really telling people to get rid of them, but it is always good to know um, that the prices are rising. And when, when you say landlines, does that include like a, an Xfinity voice cable internet package? Is, th is that also a landline in this case? Um, so it, it can be, um, in the next slide, I'm going to go over um, a different type of landline that's uh, specifically over the internet. Yeah, so this is, um, another option is voice over the internet. So this differs from the traditional landline because this is only over the internet um, as opposed to the phone lines. So um, again, this can be still a home phone option, um, but it is not like a landline where, um, you know, you would still have service if the internet went out. This, um, you need a strong internet connection for, um, you need to make sure that the company you're going with um, operates in your area. And you always want to check their customer re reviews to see if people like the company. Um, and prices can vary a lot on VoIP, uh, voice over the internet um, offers. So you just want to make sure that you can't get a better deal by combining with another telecom service, such as Xfinity internet and voice over the internet um, or cable or with your cell phone service. Um, and those are some companies listed that we um, say that you can start your search with, but there are a lot of different options. Um, and as always, um, you know, always shop around and don't be afraid to negotiate these plans. And then the last one is cell phones. And there's obviously a lot of variation with cell phones as well. Um, so the, the cheapest option for a cell phone is usually to combine the service for multiple people um, on a group plan or a family plan. 
uh, that can end up saving you a lot of money. Usually a standalone cell phone for one person is just weirdly a lot more expensive. Um, and some questions you may wanna ask before buying a cell phone or um, are, are, are you offering any special deals right now? Um, what are your payment options? Some phones will allow you to pay per month um, or you can buy your phone outright. Um, you can also lease phones. Um, so those are just different options to look into. And our phone guide goes into all those different options and, and what might be right for you. And then you always wanna ask what the total cost of the phone, including your taxes and fees is going to be. Um, and we typically recommend to skip some insurance on your phone um, because it might just be an extra charge that you really don't end up using. Um, and you always wanna look into how much data you're using and if you can downgrade your plan. Um, always use your Wi-Fi when you're at home and whenever possible uh, to, to not use as much data if you have a limited amount on your plan. And then again, just shop around, really do your homework and see um, who's offering the best deals at any given time. So that is really all I have um, for my portion of the presentation. And I always like to put up our hotline. You can call it at any time, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 4, and someone will answer um, and answer your questions or open up a case for you. And we also have our UBC email, again, that you can send copies of your bills to at any time. Um, but I think next, uh, my colleague Scott is going to talk a little bit about the electric side of things and municipal aggregation. Yes, thank you, Kate. Um, so I want to acknowledge first that, uh, well, typically Cub doesn't get involved in the municipal or co-op electric um, uh, well, there is no regulation around that really, because CUB was set up like Representative Yang Rohr said, to mainly focus on the investor owned utility customers. Um, that said, uh, municipal and co-op rate paying customers represent a pretty big portion of this state. And um, there is a need for education, these issues and get, really complicated. So Cub has just put out a new fact sheet um, because of having a conversation with Representative Yang Rohr and because of some of the representatives constituents and uh, people from Naperville specifically. So just want to point out, I'm sure everybody knows that there are some differences between say Naperville Public Utility and ComEd. Uh, Naperville Public Utility is not regulated by the Illinois Commerce Commission where ComEd is. There are certain standards, for example, the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act that just passed. Uh, that bill does a lot of things, forces utilities to do a lot of things, but those things only apply to um, ComEd, Ameren, MidAmerican over in the Quad Cities. Um, so typically when Kate and I would talk about some of these uh, savings tips and how to prepare for winter or what to do, um, you, you know, what to do, how to, how to take advantage of some of these programs, we talk a lot about energy efficiency uh, because those programs are required by the state of Illinois. The, the utilities are required to offer those programs. They're required to offer rebates. They're required to offer demand response programs, uh, pricing programs, special pricing programs. There are a whole list of consumer protections that guard people from getting shut off at certain times of the year. There are pretty strict rules around um, how much people can and can't be charged to have their service reconnected. There's, there's no law that says that municipal utilities like Naperville Public Utility have to offer those same protections. Um, so I think it's important to point out that um, there, there is a lot missing here. And I live in Springfield, a municipal utility ourselves. Kate and I would typically talk about things like sign up for community solar. That will, you're guaranteed to save money on your electric bill. 
if you're income qualified, sign up for Solar for All. Get solar panels put on your house through Solar for All. Those types of programs, while not while not legally barred in Naperville, the city of Naperville has made the decision not to allow those kinds of programs uh, because they require power purchase agreements. Um, the city of Naperville has a contract with the Illinois Municipal Electric Agency and the Illinois Municipal Electric Agency recommends that Naperville not allow power purchase agreements. Um, so, that's understandable that municipalities want to maintain total ratepayer control. Um, but it, it's also unfortunate because those types of programs can save people a considerable amount of money. Uh, the, the fact sheet that we, I think, have linked um, in, yes, the, the fact sheet that, that Donna has linked in uh, the Facebook comments, that's a start. It gives you an understanding of how your utility differs. And I, I'll, I'll give credit again to Representative Yang Rohr. Um, she has really inspired Cub to continue to publish resources on this. And over the coming year, we'll be putting out more resources and toolkits for people to use, how to address your utility, how to better understand some of these issues so that you are an informed consumer and although Cub can't take these complaints to the Illinois Commerce Commission on your behalf, we can talk to you about how you can talk to your city council and your utility managers and have conversations with them about um, maybe the city of Naperville needs to offer more robust energy efficiency programs and needs to offer more uh, consumer protections around shutoffs or uh, financial assistance programs. While LIHEAP that Kate mentioned is available to everybody in the state, utilities, um, Ameren, for example, or ComEd, they have other uh, shareholder funded programs and grants that people can get to help um, offset really high electric bills. So uh, that's something I think we can look forward to in the future. And I, we would be happy to partner with you anytime, Representative Yang Roar, to to keep talking about this, keep educating. Yeah, and um, Scott is being very kind because I think um, our, our office is doing what we should be doing, which is um, getting our constituents' concerns to the the appropriate people. And I'm I'm gonna go ahead and and, and make sure that the people who who really brought this to our attention are recognized, like Greg Hubert, for example, the Naperville Environmental Sustain Sustainability Tax Task Force. They have um, a great group there that are super engaged and making sure that uh, we are moving forward on, um, on, on a lot of these issues. Uh, th the other thing is, um, you know, Naperville, there is Naperville Electric, but there are parts of um, like unincorporated Naperville, uh, there are parts of Warrenville that are part of the 41st district um, that do have ComEd and then and do have kind of these these other opportunities to to lower their bills through like through the solar program. Um, and, you know, we're, we're really, you know, there's still work to do in the, the Naperville side to, to make sure that we are moving forward. Um, Scott, I think you have like really exciting news uh, on, on a grant that you re recently received that'll help us um, help, well, help you help, help uh, municipal co-ops like, like ours. Yeah, uh, Cub recently did get a grant um, from a regional network called RAMP. And um, that money is going to be used to fund my time to uh, organize around some of these issues and make connections in municipal and co-op utilities across the state. You mentioned uh, Greg Hubert there. He will be a partner in this. I, I will make sure of it. Um, but yeah, that's our goal is to raise the aware, raise awareness of the, these utility issues and educate consumers and um, uh, make them better advocates for themselves. And who knows, maybe we could see some changes in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's so interesting when I when I talk with with our constituents, when I go to, to the doors, we, we do have so many people who are who are so well informed and know, you know, the, the Naperville situation. But there are there are still plenty of people who get who are pretty surprised that we are owners of a coal plant and that we get our electricity from coal. 
So uh, still lots of work to be done for sure on our, our end. I can sympathize. I, I also own a coal plant here in Springfield, so <laughs> I definitely sympathize. So um, lots of resources that we just kind of threw out there today. Um, we're, we're going to list all of them uh, so that so that people watching um, can al can always go back and and see um, the, the details of what we were talking about. Uh, I, I am so appreciative of, of you, Kate, and, and you, Scott, for, for joining us today um, and for, for sharing your expertise. Uh, you know, uh, looking forward to the second part of, of this. Um, so again, uh, there will be a bill clinic that we're hosting with Cub on October 26th. It's going to be uh, from 7 to 9 o'clock, and um, uh, uh, people in the district can sign up and sign up for, for sessions with, with Cub. Uh, it's gonna be at the Nichols Library at 200 West Jefferson Street. Um, it's gonna be, or Jefferson Avenue in Naperville. Um, so you can register for, for time slots on uh, our, our website. That's repyangroar.com. Um, and then if you go to the events section, you'll, you'll see where you can register. Um, and, and we're gonna post all this in the comments section for, for everyone's convenience. So you can just go to those links. Um, you know, I want to thank everyone again for, for joining. Um, Kate and Scott, any any parting words before we sign off? Um, for me, I just I, I can't emphasize enough that we haven't been using a ton of gas over the summer because typically water heaters, um, you know, they're they're big users, but our furnaces and it's getting pretty chilly out there and gas is really, really expensive. So um, there's going to be a bit of a shock. I think for some people uh, when we hit November and December and we're paying this much for gas. So just be prepared for that. And if you need utility bill assistance, um, Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, of course, always reach out to Representative Yang Roar's office or to Cub as well. And let's make sure that we get people um, help with that and nobody gets shut off during these cold months. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you have any trouble paying your bills, always contact your utility, um, or you can always call our hotline, uh, the number that I listed, and you can email us as well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having us. Um, yeah, we appreciate it. We're always happy to do events together. Kate and Scott, thank you again so much. Uh, we're going to post this uh, again on our Facebook channel. We'll put it on our YouTube channel, and it'll also be on um, the Rep Yang Roar website. Uh, besides, uh, besides this, besides the, um, the, the bill clinic that, that will take place in a few weeks, uh, we also have a monthly coffee and conversation um, to, to make sure that, that everyone in the district uh, has a voice um, that, that they feel like they can share and, and they, can, they can share ideas with me. Um, and I hope to, to see, see our constituents there. If, if anyone has any questions, uh, you can always contact me, contact my office uh, via email at info at repyangroar.com or uh, give us uh, a call or a text at 630-296-4157. Um, with that, thank you again so much and really appreciate your, your taking the time to, to be with us tonight.